Assalamu alaikum, I'm Yusuf, a graduate from culinary school and I've also worked under a head chef in a five-star hotel. These days I spend my time teaching people how to cook online and in this new series we're going to be taking a look at popular foods around the world that might not necessarily be halal but we're going to recreate them for you right here, made halal. On today's episode, we're looking at the Panda Express Orange Chicken. Now, this is not something that a lot of us are familiar with because Panda Express is an American brand, but it's all a big food trend that looks really good when you look at it. This really beautiful, glistening orange chicken. And we're going to bring that to you today, made halal. <sighs> okay, so I'm back from my little hunt for orange chicken. All right, now, as you can see, it's not too bad, actually. So you've got like this glazed sort of chicken uh, and I've got it on a bed of rice, uh, egg fried rice as well. So uh, yeah, let's see what this tastes like. Okay, bismillah. Okay, now the flavor of this is actually not bad. So similar to what we're trying to achieve, it's got some sweet, some spice, some um, some vinegary, like acidic uh, sort of element to it as well. But it's got the issue that I thought it would have um, in that the actual skin is very soft because it's been sit it's been sort of sitting in that sauce for a long time. Um, whereas I think with us, we want to try and achieve a chicken that is crispy, but also has that sauce layer around it, which I think is really important. Um, and then also like. Also, like they've used chicken breasts, and I find that like chicken breasts can just be a little bit drier. I think when you use chicken thigh, it's just so much better. Um, but they have used chicken breasts here. Having said that, it's not bad. It's actually quite nice. Uh, but I think we can definitely make it better um, with a really simple uh, recipe. Right, so to start off, we're going to be making our sauce. It's actually really simple if you think about it. What we're going to do is start off with our oranges. Of course, it's orange sauce, so it's got to have oranges in it. Now, I'm using a juicer today. You can absolutely use your hands. You can even use orange juice from the shop. It's absolutely fine. What I'm going to do is take the top and bottom off my orange, give it a nice peel, chuck it in the juicer, just makes life a bit quicker, and have my orange juice in a jug ready on one side. Next ingredient we're going to add is some chili. Now, the way you know if chili is ripe is that you can literally just pull the little hat, the little top off, and it should come off naturally. If it's really hard to sort of pull off, it's not ripe, you want to get that nice ripe chili, because chili should add flavor, it shouldn't just be spicy, it should be really nice and give some nice sort of heat throughout the dish. So once I pull the top off my chili, we're going to half it, cutting it into thin slices. At this point, if you want to remove the seeds, you can do. The actual spicy part of the chili is not the seeds, but what holds the seeds, that white sort of pith that goes through the chili. That's what you want to remove if you can't handle the heat. Personally here, we can do it, so we're going to keep it on. I'm going to slice it up nice and thin, and we're going to chop it up real fine and add that into our orange juice. I'm going to add it bit by bit. You don't want to add too much at one time and regret it. You're just going to add a bit. Make sure you wash your hands, by the way, because I forgot to and I rubbed my eye accidentally. So you don't want to do that. Next up, we're adding in some vinegar and some honey as well. Notice that I never gave you specific instructions for this. Why? Well, orange chicken is one of those dishes that I like to teach to people that are learning about seasoning for the first time. Because you have that balance of sweetness, acidity, spiciness, that all works together. This is not something that you can teach or give measurements to, it's something that you have to explore yourself. So if you're trying to make this and follow the recipe that we've given, that's absolutely fine, but I really encourage you to sort of play around with things. Some of you like it spicier, some of you like it sweeter. Really take control of it and make your own sort of recipe. That's what cooking is all about. So I'm gonna give it a stir, a little taste, and as you can see, I've added a little bit more vinegar and a bit more honey and a bit more chili as well, just to balance those flavors out a bit because I thought it was a bit too orangey at first. And that's absolutely fine. It doesn't mean you're making a mistake, it means you're making it your own recipe. Next up, what I'm gonna do is transfer the whole thing into a pan and bring it to a simmer. Now because I use fresh orange juice and if you do the same you'll notice that there's some sort of light foam that forms on the top. It's not the end of the world if you don't remove it but I don't really like the appearance of it so I'm just going to scoop it out with a spoon absolutely fine. If you're using orange juice from a carton you won't find this problem so you know it's not going to create too much of an issue anyway. Whilst that's simmering away we're going to make something called a slurry. This is really simple. All it is is a couple tablespoons of corn flour mixed in with some water until it looks like a sort of milky substance and we're going to add this to it while it's hot mixing it in. You'll almost see it instantly. It's going to start to become very gelatinous and very sort of sauce-like. I would really recommend using a couple tablespoons of corn flour in this mixture, but don't add it all at once. Add it bit by bit because you'll start to see the consistency that you want. Some of you might like it really thin, some of you might like it really thick, and that's absolutely fine. Just add it bit by bit, keep stirring it. As the heat sort of starts to cook it, it will just start to really thicken. And remove it from the heat when you're happy with it, adding in two tablespoons of sesame seeds. Okay, so now that we've got our sauce out of the way, let's focus on the chicken. Make sure you clean down your surface and have a clean work environment, and we're gonna take our chicken. I'm using some boneless thigh. You really want to use thigh and not breast because thigh is that sort of dark meat. It can give you that little bit of chew. It's also more forgiving so it doesn't dry out as quickly when you cook it. So thigh is really the right sort of cut of meat that you want in this case. I've had it chopped up quite small. I don't want it too big so that you're sort of 
cutting it and chewing it, you want it to be really sort of bite sized. And all I'm going to do is add in about two tablespoons of corn flour to this, mixing it together so that each piece is covered in corn flour. You might be wondering why corn flour, why not plain flour? Because plain flour is quite heavy and it's going to give you sort of a heavy batter, whereas corn flour, it won't give you the color that plain flour has, but it's going to make it so, so crispy. So even when we cover it with our sauce, it's still going to maintain that crispy sort of shell. What you want to do now is heat up a frying pan or a wok with about an inch of oil, vegetable oil, not olive oil, because it's got the higher smoke point and it's sort of better suited to when you're trying to like deep fry something, whereas olive oil might burn a bit quicker if you try and bring it to a high heat. And what I'm going to do is turn the heat to a sort of medium, medium low even. You don't want to have the heat so high that you burn the chicken. Just heat up that oil gently, add in a piece of chicken to test it out and then you can slowly start to add them one by one. Now, one of the funniest things I see when people are cooking is that they'll have something on a really high heat, add something to it, and they just leave it there. Like one of the most important principles in cooking is to control the heat. So often you look at a recipe and it says high flame, low flame, medium flame. Really just make sure you're in control of so it. It's like, yeah, 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 it's a little principle. It's like sometimes it can be too hot. It might go crazy, it might burn. Just move it off the heat and let that residual heat cook it. And then you can turn the heat down and bring it back. Like just control your heat, make sure. I think it's one of the funniest things I see people do is like, it's clearly burning. <laughs> they just have the heat high because they think it's gonna cook fast and they think that they can't move it off the thing. And it's like, just turn the heat down and move it off. Let it chill out for a bit. Like it's not gonna go anywhere. So if you have the heat on too high and you put your chicken in and it's really starting to roar and spit, don't worry about it. Just lower the heat, move the pan off the heat, allow the oil to cool down naturally and then bring it back on. What you don't wanna do is think, oh my God, the pan is stuck to this flame. I can't do anything about it. You can just control the flame take control of it, your kitchen will be a lot calmer that way, trust me. Once your chicken is fully fried off and you can tell that it's cooked, this will be about four minutes in total. We're going to lift it up with a slotted spoon, putting it into a bowl. You should even start to hear the tapping of that crunchy shell hitting the bowl. And yes, it might not look like the most colorful thing because we use corn flour, but it will really be crispy. And now the final thing is to bring your two pieces together. I'm gonna to add in my chicken into the sauce and it doesn't matter if the sauce is hot or cold because that chicken is hot, it's going to really stick to it. And that corn flour exterior is gonna really allow the sauce to coat the whole thing fully. I'm gonna give it a really good mix and we're gonna serve it up on, well, whatever you like really. You can use noodles, you can use rice. I'm using a bed of rice along with a few vegetables. And I'm gonna to top this off with a little pinch of sesame seeds and that is our final dish. But let's see how it tastes. So, I don't know if the mic will pick it up, but you get that really nice crunchy taste in your mouth even though it's covered in sauce. And that's what the corn flour is perfect for. It gives it a really nice kind of crisp texture. You get the initial sweetness of the, of the orange and the honey. And then you get a little bit of heat and that vinegar coming through at the end. This is why this is just so perfect. And I absolutely love it. I think it works really, really well.